So I'm continuing with my line art, but I'm also aware of some of my coloring interests, whether it's really simple flat color or duotone color. You can start looking for things online. I love the different colors this artist uses. They're kind of unusual and ones I don't use very often, like the pinks, purples, greens. And those colors are going to be very helpful from inspiration when we start coloring these next class. But first we got to finish our line art. So we just keep plugging away. Of course, yeah, these are just pixels. So you can duplicate. For instance, I can make a new layer. I'll show this quick. And then I can draw a finger. All right, a nice smooth finger. And then I can take my lasso, duplicate that finger, Command J, take that copy with my move tool. Option Command T in Photo P, just Command T in Photoshop. Shrink that finger down and place it where I want it, right? And then I can duplicate it again. Command J, Option Command T, Transform, move it, shrink it, maybe hold down Shift to distort it a little bit so it doesn't look too copy pasty. and make that the third finger. Yeah, nothing wrong with using all you know about raster compositing. Now the only issue there is now I have fingers on multiple layers. So I want to merge all those layers together for my final ink work. I'm going to take all these layers, hold down shift, merge them all together with command E or layer merge layers. Then I can see what I've got so far. So close. And then I might decide I don't want to do all those snakes. It's a lot of snakes. Maybe they don't add as much. Because then I gotta color all the snakes. You know how it is. You don't have to do everything you sketch. You don't always have to stick to your plan, but it all informs what you do. I did like the little detail that this toddler who looks really fun loving has these really sharp teeth. So maybe the toddler's the Gorgon. Well, there you go. Yeah, Medusa had to be a little girl too, you know? Had to have playmates. I thought it was just, I mean, there's all these stories, right? Yeah. So you got turned in because of jealousy and yeah. But I thought it was just because someone fell in love with her that the goddess was wanted to fall in love with them. Okay. So I think I was thinking this would just be a shadow on the tongue. So I'll just do that in color. I don't need to outline all of those. Yeah, you get to make up your own story with your, your creatures. So you can avoid the, the problematic <laughs> social politics of mythology. The foundational Medusa for me was from the 19, I think it's 85 or something around there, a movie of Clash of the Titans.
Yeah, Bubo the Owl. Classic stuff. That would be a fun job, just doing the drawings for like props departments and then seeing them get made. It's funny how these creative jobs are always kind of highly specialized. So the people that make the puppets and things almost never get to design the puppets. Which seems unfair. But all the skills just take a lot of a lot of time and energy to learn. But if you can design the concept art, then other people will make it for you. I'll fix all of this when I turn it into a vector. So I'm not going to waste so much time with the lasso yet. Because I want this to be my last video where I'm just inking. Spear. So what I'm trying to show you with this theme is that you can make really cool personal visions of things that don't have to rely on existing intellectual property. And you'll still have kind of the, the familiarity with an audience. They'll go, oh, Medusa, cool. I like that version. Instead of always having to do like anime characters or fan art. This is fan art, but fan art of things that you're allowed to use, that everyone has modified for their own purposes over the years. So then I had this bright idea of giving her this striped shirt, my little toddler, but that means I need to draw each of those stripes, and I think I will leave off the snakes. So I'm almost done. Oh, but this is what I'll do with the stripes. I'm going to leave little gaps so you can see why we want to connect things. If I don't fully fill them in, I won't have to individually color each stripe. It will all flow into the same color. Same thing here. This could, could be could be considered hatching. Uh, let's see. Let's just do one. Okay. So I turn off. And does that look like a sticker design? That'd be interesting. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Maybe instead of all the snakes, because they actually kind of muddy the silhouette, but I could always throw little things out like this. Just like little shapes of exuberance. <laughs> Maybe I'll make them contained shapes. What do toddlers do? They spit a lot. <laughs> so it's going to be little bits of spittle, little hunks of gorgon hair flying. Adds a little flair and pizzazz. You know how important pizzazz is now. Okay, and if I feel like some of them are not quite right, I can always just lasso them and transform them until they are just right. And my, you know, don't forget how nice it is to warp things, distort things. 
rotate things. Maybe move this down. There's a reason we study compositing first. Just having control of each pixel is important, even if we made the pixels ourselves. Yes, they're a little sloppy, but I'm going to show you how we fix that. Okay. Now, what do I do? I'm going to save it. Command S. But I'm not done with my line art yet. If I was only going to use freeware, I'd be done. You know, and then I would start coloring behind it. But I want to do an extra step to turn this line art, which is already high resolution, to turn it into a vector. So it's perfectly clean at any scale. And it gives us an extra opportunity to clean it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is turn off all the backgrounds. Make sure you've saved it. So I've got my PSD here. I'm going to open that with preview just to make sure it's fully inked. So there it is. And I'm going to save it as a PNG. So I'm going to say export as PNG. It's going to go to downloads. This is a separate copy. I call this, I rename these files because they're transitional files, and I rename them as test files. So I'm just going to throw test in the beginning of the name because this is something I'm trying, but you're going to think this is pretty cool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up with Adobe Illustrator. This will not work in vector.com. This is optional. You can get a perfectly good spot illustration just by keeping your line art rasterized. But if we open it up in Adobe Illustrator, we can do what's called image tracing it and have Illustrator turn it into a vector for us. And because we digitally inked it, instead of just scanning in inks, it's going to do a really good job. It's not going to take a lot of correction. So here it is. This is my raster file in Illustrator. You can see the pixels. And this is Adobe's you know, pay-for program, professional program, that's like vector.com for us. Once it comes into Illustrator, just click on it, with the top tool, you'll see its original proportions. Then you're going to click on Properties in the upper right-hand corner here. And you're going to click on Image Trace. You're going to have the options of Image Trace open. You want black and white logo. That's because this only works best when you're only looking for white shapes and black shapes. Now, if I zoom in on it, it's no longer a pixel. It's all vector. I can zoom in on it endlessly. But the problem is it's white vectors with black vectors. So to be able to get rid of the white, and I can show you that by moving it off of the, the artboard, you can see. So now I click on the options that are next to it, because it actually hasn't turned it into a vector yet. It's just previewing it. And this gives me the image trace window options. You can also find this under window and image trace. And then we want the advanced options. I don't know why they make this so hard. But if you click on the drop down arrow for the advanced options, then you click on ignore color. And the color it will ignore is the white. So then you get to just clean vector line art. Now at this point, you can see what was sloppy before in my line.